Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to La Dame Style. My name is Temperance Monet, I'm a signed model, and I'm here to give you modeling advice as well as answer your questions to anything about the industry. So today we're gonna to be talking about the difference between a freelance model and a model who is signed to a modeling agency. Now, when it comes to modeling, it's all about exclusive networking. It's about getting jobs that actually will pay you, working with clients who are reputable, who are trustworthy, and who will really help further your modeling career. So sign with a modeling agency, a reputable modeling agency, an agency who has ties to clients and photographers who are professional and who will really give you the modeling content and help broaden your skills to be able to transform you into a supermodel or into a male supermodel. So sign to a modeling agency, you definitely will come across that. You will come across having an agent who will submit you to modeling jobs with local or national or international clients who will set you up with photographers who will give you the portfolio that you need to be able to present to clients so that you can book those top jobs and walk exclusively for top brands like Burberry or Chanel or someone of that nature. When you are an independent model, of course you are your own agent, you are your own management, and you are finding these jobs on your own. You don't have someone working the back end for you, you're doing everything yourself. So the jobs may not be as great just because a lot of local jobs and things of that nature don't pay as much as obviously Burberry and Chanel and Tommy Hilfiger, and they work with signed models. Also, when you're signed to a modeling agency, in the beginning you will be doing some low paid jobs or free work until you're able to work with top clients. As an independent model or freelance model, which really is the same thing, it's just freelance is a little outdated, independent sounds a little more better, more professional, but as an independent model, you too will be working low paid jobs or free jobs. Now, as you grow your modeling experience and skills and you start working with top photographers and clients, then the job pay will be a lot greater, but it won't be as much as an independent model because a lot of top brands like ASOS and um, American Eagle and Victoria's Secret only work with signed models. So to be an independent model is still a good thing to do. It's really good with networking. It's really good with getting your images and really broadening up your social media platform so that you can get scouted through your social media by booking certain jobs and showing scouts and showing photographers and clients that you are model potential. You do have, or not model potential, but you are a model. You do have the skill. You enjoy it. You're really good at posing. You're good at presenting yourself. So being an independent model is still really good. It's just that when you're signed to a modeling agency, you definitely have someone to back you up. You have someone in your legal field that will definitely help you when it comes to working with clients on set. If something goes wrong, you can definitely contact your agent, you can call your agent, you can text your agent and they will immediately handle the problem. Same for if you're on set for a photo shoot, um, your agent will definitely help you with getting ready for casting calls, tell you the do's and the don'ts, how to dress how to present yourself, what the client is looking for, sometimes what to say. When you're assigned to a modeling agency, you do have someone who is, I would say your mentor because they are your manager, typically your mother manager, someone who nurtures you. So you do have them to fall back on versus as an independent model. You really just have yourself and you really have to do your research when it comes to applying yourself to casting calls and going to open calls and shooting with photographers just to assure that you are working with the right people people who have the right intent in mind. Another thing to look at is when you're assigned to an agency, your agent will help you with adulting pretty much. Finances, how to file your taxes, uh, booking, travel, room and board. They will give you the ins and outs. They will set up workshops to help better your runway walk, to help better your posing. And like I said, they will give you advice before castings and things of that nature of what you should do, what you, not, what you should not do, red flags, what the clients are looking for. When you're an independent model, you really have to research these things yourself. So 
you're kind of taking away of perfecting yourself, I would say, as a model. Not all the way, but the time that you spend researching and figuring out how to do your taxes and who to reach out to do your taxes and making sure that you're not getting scammed that way and reading contracts and finding a legal team to help you with signing contracts or you may do it on your own, which people typically do. Um, having to comb through the contract, make sure that you don't miss anything so that you don't bind yourself by this contract and be in the contract longer than you should or so that you're not paying more money to the model agent or the model agency than you should you know you have to take away from perfecting yourself as a model maybe you need to work on your skin your hair um, your mental health your physical health and things of that nature but now you have to research and it's totally fine it's all doable anybody can do it if you really want to be in this industry then you can do it that's pretty much like the pros and cons kind of when it comes to modeling independent and doing freelance as well they both are awesome I definitely don't want to discourage anyone and make you think that you should be signed to an agency or you should be a freelance model different strokes for different folks a lot of people love doing it by themselves a lot of people love being signed to a model management and having someone do it for them so it just depends on what you want to do what you're looking for and how much control you like to have over your modeling career as far as booking jobs when it comes to signing to a modeling agency like I said you will have your mother agent find you those jobs find you the castings tell you where to go when to go what time what to bring how to dress things of that nature as an independent model like I said you'll be researching it yourself now there's a lot of websites and databases that independent models can sign up for and go to that will show them casting calls in their area so that if you're thinking about starting modeling on your own then that's a reference that you can use but like I said you will be finding your own jobs and your own casting calls and things of that nature and when you're signed to an agency you will have your mother agent find those jobs for you when it comes to booking jobs as an independent model I feel like the industry takes you a little more serious so I know there's always the exception of the rule and we've heard a lot of times of models especially ethnic models being mistreated about their hair their skin uh, maybe like their hair not being able to take water if they're doing like the wet look and just crazy things that people just throw on models and talk rudely up to models about. Um, we've heard a lot about that, but I do feel like when you're signed to an agency, a lot of clients take you a lot more serious because they don't want to you know, ruin their reputation. They don't want to mess up a good thing that they have with a modeling agency that is reputable that gives them really good models. So a lot of times people will treat you a lot better when you're assigned. As an independent model, I don't want to say that you'll always be treated badly, but I feel like a lot of people are unprofessional at times because they feel like, well, you don't have that legal team. You don't have someone to back you up. I mean, that's what they may think. You may have a lawyer in the family, I don't know, but typically, as an independent model, you don't have that legal team or someone to back you up, so people feel as though they can talk to you a certain way or treat you a certain way, or you're just so grateful to have this job that you'll just say yes to anything, which is not true. Everyone should be treated fairly, whether you're an independent model or whether you are a signed model. So do know that sometimes people take you serious, sometimes they don't. A lot of times that can happen with modeling school as well or workshops that are being offered in your area. A lot of model scouts who run workshops and things of that nature, some do take advantage of independent models because they know that they don't know better or because they're not signed to an agency so they think that whatever job that they find them they'll be so grateful for but as long as you pay for the workshops but at the same time you could probably find those jobs yourself and probably find even greater jobs. So you don't have to subject yourself to going to a modeling school or doing workshops that cost money you can independently find these jobs yourself like I said you can go on websites and databases and a lot of times Instagram people are advertising for open calls and casting calls and things of that nature like I said you do want to do your research even if it's an agency name and it says like loom agency you still want to research about them if you don't hear a lot about them then you may not want to do it or you need to bring someone along with you if you are an independent model if you are a signed model 
mean, your agency has networks and connections with reputable photographers and clients to where you really don't have to bring someone with you unless you're underage and it's required. But at the same time, you still need to be cautious because just because you're assigned to an agency and a reputable agency, you could be signed to one model management or IMG and a photographer or a client can still talk to you in a wrong manner or be inappropriate, sexual harassment, we've heard of these things. So you still have to be cautious, but I do feel like when you're assigned to a model management, clients and photographers do take you a lot serious because they want to continue to work with a reputable management or agency and really good models. So just make sure that you avoid red flags or ask someone, ask a mentor if you're an independent model, reach out to other models and ask them their opinion. If you're a signed model, then you have that legal team, you have your agent, your mother agent who will always help you. Never feel ashamed or feel like you're being annoying if you reach out to them. Yes, they have lives and sometimes they have family and children and things of that nature, but your modeling career is very important as well. So if you ever have questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you have someone to reach out to when you're modeling. I want to also touch on another factor when it comes to adulting in the modeling industry. You have to adult as a signed or independent model. As a signed model, when it comes to getting paid for jobs, you do have your agent who is constantly reaching out to the clients every so many months to assure that they will have your payment when they said they'll have it and to assure that you do get paid the amount that was spoken about. Now, as an independent model, you have to sign up on a website to be able to send invoices to clients. Now, one thing is is you really have to hope that the client will pay you because sometimes people don't take independent models seriously and think that they can just use them for work and then not pay them or not give them their pictures and just do whatever they want and that's not true. So as an independent model, you do have to constantly reach out to the client and make sure that you do get paid and make sure that you get paid the amount that you're supposed to get paid. If you don't, then you can take them to small claims court. That's a huge legal thing. It's definitely possible. Never get discouraged always go for what you deserve and never feel intimidated because it's a whole legal process always take action and get what you deserve so if you do have to take them a small claims court that's something else that you do have to research and research getting a lawyer or possibly doing it yourself and things of that nature or sometimes people just let it go but that's another reason why clients take advantage of independent models because nothing is said and things continue to go on as if nothing happened so just know that as a signed model you do have some Someone who's reaching out to clients and who is making sure that they pay you and pay you on time as an independent model because you're your own manager you do have to take time out from you know developing yourself as a model and make sure that you are creating the invoice make sure you sign up on a website I will say that I believe PayPal is the best website to use when it comes to sending invoices I think they only take out like a small fee of like three to five percent versus other websites may take out like a 15 to 20 percent fee just to send an invoice which is so crazy to me but you do have to send an invoice and continue to follow up with clients just to make sure you get paid because you deserve to get paid too just because you're you're not signed to an agency does not mean that you should be wrongfully treated. So with that being said, let's talk about contracts. Now there's two types of contracts when it comes to the modeling industry. There's non-exclusive and there's exclusive. Non-exclusive means that you can sign with an agency in your local city or state as well as sign with another agency outside of your city or state. So for instance, if you live in California and you're on a non-exclusive contract, you can sign with a modeling agency in New York, Miami, Chicago, and anywhere else. And you can also get signed to that agency on on your own. You can work with your agency that you have in California, get your portfolio developed, and you can use that to market your social media and to be able to reach out to model scouts and modeling agencies to get signed to New York, LA, Miami, Chicago, or wherever else you want to sign to. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, why would I do that when I have a model manager or a mother manager? Not all mother agencies are the same. Some work a lot harder, faster, quicker, have more connections. Um, some get more jobs in, some have better ties to photographers than others, some are more high quality than others. So to be able to scout your own jobs and scout your own modeling agencies and to be able to apply yourself is a really good thing to do while you're assigned to an agency in your local area or state that will help get you local jobs and things that will help perfect your skills and model and that will help give you content to be able to put on your social media. So it's great to have two things and you never know a lot of modeling 
calling agencies and managements that are small boutique and local and city and states that are not in like top fashion markets they sometimes have model scouts from top agencies come in or they may have one scout that they really know of who will come in and scout their models and you may get signed that way so as a model you always want to have different avenues and take different detours to get to where you want so if that means signing with a small agency who may not have really great connections but they can give you that content that you need to put on your Instagram like maybe you're able to apply yourself for a local fashion week in that area or work with local designers in that area and you're able to get content to put on your social media that's a really good thing and then in addition to that you're able to seek out your own castings and things of that nature that's a really good thing now with an exclusive contract your mother agent is the only one that can scout jobs and photographers and anything model related for you you cannot do it yourself so if you see an open call in New York and you're signed to a California agency you cannot go to that open call if your agent doesn't agree or if they don't send you to it and nine times out of ten they usually won't because they want to develop your portfolio and once your portfolio is developed and they want to be able to send it to all the scouts that they know and things of that nature but like I said a lot of model managements don't move as fast as others don't have the connections as others so to sign an exclusive contract with a small agency that doesn't have that much networking connections is not a good thing so with an exclusive you can't do what you want to do you have to go by what your agent says even if you want to change your hair maybe wear contacts if you want to shave your eyebrows off if you want to dye your hair if you want to get a tattoo piercings anything with your appearance that you want to change you have to run that by your mother agent before you can do it so that's another thing as a non-exclusive contract you don't have to do that and you're kind of like a freelance model but signed to an agency as well but when you sign an exclusive contract you are buying by that contract and you have to run everything through your agent so that is why a lot of people love doing non-exclusive contracts if they are offered so if that's something that you like when you meet with a modeling agency ask them if they offer non-exclusive contracts and if that's an option then you definitely want to take that route for instance I know of a time where I was signed to a modeling agency there was actually a model who was underage and she was very excited about getting braces our mother agent did not want her to get braces because of the potential shift that it could have on her jaw structure. She was a model booking jobs in a local area. A lot of photographers and clients loved working with her and our mother agent's concern was that her jaw structure, her face structure might change due to the braces, which makes sense because her teeth shift and she may not be that working model like she was. So my mother agent definitely didn't want her to get braces. The model was actually signed on an exclusive contract, but because she was underage, it's her parents' decision of everything about her appearance before it is the mother agent's decision. If she was over 18, then it would be the mother agent's decision about everything, and you would have to go to the mother agent and ask, can I do this, can I do that, and things of that nature. But because the girl was underage, it's the parents' decision on whether they want to get her braces or not. And I think the girl got braces. I don't know what happened because I ended up leaving the agency, but that is a another thing like I said you have to ask your agent and sometimes your agent doesn't want you to do it so you may not be able to do it it depends on age and things of that nature so that's another reason why it's a really good thing to sign a non-exclusive contract so that you're not buying and you don't have to not change your appearance if you don't want to you can do your hair especially like with the whole modeling industry going into inclusion and trying to include everybody race color creed body type shades and things of that nature to change your appearance really isn't a big deal no one has to be that standard model look of being tall and bone structure and things of that nature everyone can look different I've seen models who shave their eyebrows off who have blue hair who have purple hair who dye their eyebrows who have tattoos and things of that nature and who are still modeling and making a really good amount of money doing it so just make sure that you know what type of contract that you are signing and understand that you can either be your own boss when it comes to your appearance and getting jobs and signing to other agencies 
or you may be signing an exclusive contract which means that you have to ask your mother agent before you do anything. So if you're an independent model and this is your first modeling agency that you're signing to, I would say do a non-exclusive contract so that you can kind of get comfortable with having someone work for you because as an independent model, like I said, you're going to be doing everything yourself. So you're used to doing everything yourself, picking your pictures, booking your travel and things of that nature and to have someone else do it, you're kind of like, do they? have my best interests? Are they working fast enough? Are they working hard enough? Are they reaching out to who I would reach out? You know, and they do know, like mother agents, they do know, but like I said, some model managements are greater than others, have better networks than others, and things of that nature. So that's just something you have to research. Another thing when it comes to being an independent model and a freelance model are the fees you have to pay. Now as an independent model, you will run across the contract saying that you have to give a 20% agency fee for every job that you are paid for which makes sense because your mother agent or your modeling agency work really hard to get you in front of casting directors and any other job that you book runway shows and things of that nature so they do deserve to get paid now a 20% fee could mean that um, it's the fee for the agent as well as it could be a website fee for you to be on the website it could be a fee for um, comp cards digitals being on the agency's website you may have have to pay for that hopefully it's not a separate fee usually that's all tied into one but sometimes it can be separate but just make sure that you are signed with the agency where that 20% fee is tied into one and you definitely want to be signed to a reputable agency so that you can make enough money to pay your agency and to receive money yourself to be able to live off that money to use that money and to be able to put money in your savings or to be able to invest that money into your career to further on so that you can continue to model way up until your 60s 70s or 80s because there are a lot of older models so you definitely want to be strategic with your money and the jobs that you book and the agency that you sign with so that that 20% fee doesn't hurt you or that you don't continue to break even and are left with zero dollars but enough to pay people that's not what you want to do as a model now as an independent model of course you don't have to pay anybody the 20% fee you get all of the money yourself the only thing is you have to take money out obviously for taxes and then you have to pay yourself for what you use your money for. Maybe you reach into your savings because you want to do New York Fashion Week so you had to book an Airbnb, you needed money for traveling expenses, food, things of that nature or maybe you took money out of your savings or from your part-time job that you have to be able to develop your portfolio. All in all you still have to pay yourself back. So don't be afraid of the 20% agency fee or things of that nature because somebody has to get paid even if you're paying yourself back you're still putting back what you lost so Signing with an agency is a really good thing because if you sign with a reputable agency, they will find you really good top paying jobs that will help you make more money and you won't continue to break even or be in the negative. Versus freelance modeling, it's not the same when it comes to getting paid because you typically don't get paid as much as an independent model. A lot of brands and clients and photographers too will only work with signed models. So with freelance modeling, it's a bit different. You do have to work more because you have to make more money for the small paying jobs and you have to try not to break even or come into the negatives. So as a freelance model, just know that you are the one paying yourself back but a lot of times, a lot of freelance jobs do pay very low. So with that being said, I would definitely focus on developing myself as a model, marketing myself on social media and getting signed to a reputable agency that will help me further my career and see if they give non-exclusive contracts so that I too can find my own jobs in other agencies as well as work with my model management when it comes to them inviting scouts in and having workshops and anything that will build my skill as a model. So with that being said, I do want to say that when I began modeling, it was freelance. I was an independent model. I would go to open calls. They would like my look, but at that time they would tell me we already have a model on the board that looks like you and they would always sign the standard black girl, tall, skinny, straight hair at the time 
time. We were all wearing perms. The whole natural hair movement, let alone the whole braided hair movement was not hitting at the time. I took the independent route. I reached out to photographers who worked with sign models and I was able to build my portfolio off of that. So just know that as a freelance model, you can work with photographers that work with sign models who will work with you as well. And there are jobs that models book who are signed to agencies that you can book as well. I've booked jobs for runway shows with sign models and I was an independent model. I just did the research myself. It's just that all clients and all photographers don't do that. Some just really only work with sign models and some will work with both. It shouldn't matter whether they're signed or whether they're independent. But just know that you can book jobs and work with photographers who work with sign models and that is your best bet when it comes to building your portfolio because then you'll have a professional looking portfolio and you can go to LA, Miami, Chicago or any of the fashion markets and you'll be able to submit yourself not only looking professional but have a professional portfolio and the agency will see that and really want to sign you. So that's the goal. Then working as a freelance model it also was fun as well finding my own photographers, open calls, casting calls, being able to do whatever I want. If I wanted to change my appearance I could do it. If I wanted to go to LA and meet with five agencies I could do it. I I really loved the openness and the control that I had but at the same time I wanted greater jobs I wanted to do more than just the local fashion shows in that area and work with just you know local clients in that area I wanted to be with an agency or a management that had connections to top clients and top photographers and who would market me accordingly in addition to me marketing myself on social media so that is why I'm signed to a model management but I truly enjoy both I believe that if you don't hear anything from modeling agencies agencies or if scouts don't respond back to you or anything of that nature, you should definitely go the independent route. Reach out to other models, make model friends, see who they are working with as far as photographers and clients in your area or if they don't live in your city or state, still reach out to them, make friends with them, ask them questions or you can ask me questions so that you have a mentor that will help you within the industry and steer you in the right direction. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all came away with some takeaways away some really good tips that you're able to apply whether you're an independent or a freelance model don't be discouraged about any of them they both are awesome they both are great you just have to do your research and make sure that you're assigning to the right modeling agency or management or that you are working as a freelance model with reputable trustworthy and good photographers and clients i hope you all enjoyed the video you know where to find me go in the description box you can email me you can go on my website you can comment down below and with that being said I'll talk to you all next time